Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin mazurkas. Today we have a kind of climax of all my episodes, all my series, uh, because Mazurka Opus 50 number 3, C sharp minor, this is my absolute favorite Mazurka of all. This is Mazurka which I love uh, with all my heart and and uh, I'm so happy and excited to share my love and my, my knowledge about this mazurka with you, explaining you the details so that um, it can be easily understood. It's not an easy mazurka to understand, in fact. But uh, to, to begin with this, the story of my love, because the story of my love towards this mazurka is very similar to the story of love between Chopin and Georges Sand. Uh, if you know uh, the story, uh, Chopin, uh, at first, when he met the Georges Sand for the first time, he wrote in the letter to his parents, he wrote, Oh, I just met Georges Sand, this famous Georges Sand. What a disgusting woman, he wrote. Uh, well, he wrote uh, something like antipathic woman. It's not even a woman, he wrote. So uh, the first impression was for Chopin was a little bit well it was definitely not love in first at first sight what happened later we all know but what is also interesting is that um, sorry I had to close my window what is also interesting is um, my story about this mazurka First time when I listened to this mazurka, it was when I was about 14 or 15 years old, and it was during master classes. Uh, you know, high school students and some master class, and I was in the audience. And some student played this very mazurka for some professor from Warsaw, some woman. And I remember he, he played so badly, and I just couldn't stand it, and I couldn't stand the piece, and he's playing and teaching and everything, and I was just thinking, what the... What an ugly piece, what an ugly piece. I will never play it again. I hate it. And I don't know what Chopin thought to write such an ugly and boring music. I thought. And here I am now, loving passionately this piece. Because when I learned it, when I go into this, I found out that this is probably the, the one of the greatest masterpieces that Chopin ever wrote. And I want to share with you uh, why I think so. So, okay, let's start the music. But I start the music this time a little bit differently so that we have a kind of surprise. I will not start from the mazurka, but I will start from something else. Listen. so on. I will not continue this. Of course, Johann Sebastian Bach. Johann Sebastian Bach is preluded fugue in C minor from the second book of Das Wohltempelierte Klavier, the Well-Tempered Klavier. And why I start with this? Well, we know from the fact that Chopin in Noam, when he was about 29, 28, 29, 30, 31, he was deeply studying Das Wohltempelierte Klavier by Bach. He was even doing some revisions, some changes, editors, uh, editions, and he went so much deeply into this that all his music changed. He started to compose in a polyphonic way, so a few voices together. Now I would like to explain a little bit the polyphony for you, for all of you who are not musicians, because. Uh, Musicians who are listening now, sorry, I know you know that, but I also want 
not non musicians i also want amateurs to understand um the idea of a fugue what is actually the fugue so in a very short uh, short way as short as possible i will explain to you the fugue always always start with the team and with only one single voice without any accompaniment here we have the team like this and our task is to remember the team immediately whenever we listen to the fugue we have to keep the team in our head it is because the team will be repeated without any changes in other voices many voices depending on how many voices we have in the fugue this fugue has four voices so every voice shall repeat the theme and other voices at the same time have some kind of other music so the the accompaniment we can call it so let's listen again to the whole part of this fugue which i just played for you before the theme the second voice steam third voice fourth voice and so on so we had four voices and we could hear the team coming i think it's easy isn't it why i chose this fugue simply because the theme is quite sim similar to the mazurka we are just going to listen so now let's listen to the beginning of the mazurka Did you hear four times the theme? We can we can find here a kind of fugue. Uh, of course, a romantic composer Chopin did nev never copied Bach. He was using polyphony, Bach polyphony, to express himself, right? To whatever he wanted to express. So here we have. I can hear four voices here. Of course, some pianists can say there are two voices only written. Of course, they are. But if you use your imagination deeply, more deep, deeper, then you can, you can really hear four different voices. Just listen. First voice. Second. Third. Fourth. Then we have another episode with the scale going up and down. And not only the scale, but in the left hand we also can hear the short three notes melody. Listen. Then the last four bars we have the like a signal like bells this is quite important because this is also the ending of the mazurka will be like that um so this is the first the first theme we can say it it is repeated second time so that we have time to absorb it and to remember it it's very important very magic here we have the legato problem there are many many problems well many it's it's extremely difficult uh, to perform well i think because you need to get you need to to you need to reach this kind of level of of inspiration which chopin had when he was composing that so it's absolutely uh crucial before starting to play just to let the imagination 
and the sensibility fly. And then some, somewhere, somewhere very far away, we can hear the, the sound. Maybe the flute, or maybe somebody singing or something inside our head, but it's very, very far away. And then the second team, the second voice. And the third voice. And fourth. And then the magic continues. I try to be as etheric as possible, as delicate as possible, so that we can experience the magic. Something impossible to describe with words. part A. And then we have another part uh, which suddenly the, the character changes completely. And for me it's like a polonaise. But of course it's not. It's more like a mazur, a Polish folk dance. But it's as patriotic, brave, full of power as we have in... <laughs> suddenly we have the polonaise. Listen. <laughs> It comes the next part which I'm going to talk about in a minute but uh, just listen this is the patriotic part this is a part let's call it the Polonaise Mazur part um, which is a total contrast uh, against what we had at the beginning suddenly we are like in the reality right and then after that we have something incredible do you remember the part A we had the fugue with the team this is very important, the ending. And later we had the scale going up and then down. So here, after the patriotic part, we have these two things, but together. Together. Melody from the team is in the right hand and the left hand has the scale going up and down. It's a, another symbol, w w something which before was uh, apart, now it's together. Isn't it genius? It's absolutely genius. Listen, this is part. <laughs> it was uh, easy to catch. Left hand, like before, and the right hand, which is so together. to something again something incredible again the fugue so Chopin is coming back to the beginning part A uh, but Chopin is now 32 years old he knows all the preludes and fugues by Bach he is absolutely different composer so of course he wants to bring us back to A but the A is completely different now the fugue starts from the bass and we will hear four times the theme every time in each voice like going from down to the soprano to up just listen to this fantastic moment mm -hmm. 
second goals third goals fourth and the ending the ending is absolutely magic this is something which we don't know what it is now but we will know in a second because this will be the main theme of part b big part b of the mazurka absolutely incredible so now i want to play for you again this fugue without talking so that you can focus only on uh, catching the themes from bass to the soprano. of the mazurka so this is look how fantastic it is this is like chopin already knows that this will be in a second a main theme but we don't know and it starts well this is obedek the fastest of all Polish folk dances. The, the rhythm is the same, ta ta tam pa, ta ta tam pa, ta ta tam pa, and it should be fast, but we can do it uh, freely. We can start slower and go faster, faster, faster. Very often, Polish people are dancing like this, and it sounds quite well. And this Oberek brings us to another part, which will be a Kujawiak, so the slower Polish folk dance. And this part, Kujawiak part, is the most sincere, the most touching part of this mazurka. This is, for me, it's almost like Chopin, well, somebody is saying something. Every, this is, this is absolutely obvious. We hear somebody saying something important, saying something, expressing something which is touching. So it's like a story. And this story brings us back to the Oberek. And this is the, the main idea of part B. So I play for you the part B all together. stays here and we are back in the, we are back at the beginning so one more thing I want to point out can you hear that this Obedek even though it seems to be happy and cheerful and uh, like a party it is never played forte it's never played loud Chopin saying mezza voce very silent this is the, another symbol that Everything which is Polish is very far away. Chopin probably already lost his hope that he will ever be able to come back to the independent Poland. He could not meet his parents, his friends, he could not. And he was dreaming to be able to do it one day. But he probably lost hope. And in this opus, the whole opus 50, whenever we have Polish folk melodies, they are always to be played mezza voce. They are always to be played silent. It is very far away, unrealistic, only in Chopin's memory. 
So that's how it sounds. <laughs> to listen to how Chopin is going back to the beginning. He he's building the climax and then just leaving one note, one note alone. And on this note, from this note we start the beginning again. And then we have part A without any changes, just like it was before. And what happened next? We come back to uh, the moment when before we had this very, like a surprise ending, which is the beginning of of the Obedek, but instead of this, Chopin, Chopin uh, doesn't use it anymore, and it's very smart. He knows that first time it was a surprise. It was something which we didn't know what it is, but later we knew that this is an Obedek. There is no point in doing this again, because we already know. So instead, Chopin uh, opens the door for part C of the Mazurka. And in part C, Part C is the most difficult to understand, uh, I think, for every music lover, um, not musicians especially. So I'll try to explain for you. The beginning is, uh, this is exactly what we had before with this, do you remember, scale going up, scale going down, and the melody in the left hand. Yes, it's exactly the same thing, except Chopin adds one more melody in the upper voice, in heaven, I would say, in heaven. And it makes this moment one of the most magic moments Chopin ever wrote. For me, it's almost like a Debussy. If, if a pianist can play a good pedal, it sounds absolutely like from the other world. So just listen to this magic place. <laughs> come here that from here is something new isn't it wonderful it is absolutely wonderful the the melody we have like three melodies the melody up this and this listen again here is again a very sincere moment it's so human this part it's like schubert music again it's very human we understand we feel that chopin understands our sorrow our pain he is expressing his soul this is one of the main reasons why i love this mazurka so much because it's so human because i can also express myself and i can express all our human beings, uh, miseries, pains and s sorrows in this. Here I want you to think and imagine of the composer who is trying to say something, who is saying something with feeling pain and sorrow. Listen this. First what he's saying the first sentence. Then 
waiting for the answer, but the answer doesn't come. Taking a breath and saying again. A breath and then now, from here, we will have two questions, but rhetoric questions. They are questions without an answer. Just listen. Second. Then the bell. And it brings us down brings all us down. So all this part is very, very, very special. Just listen again. Magic part. First. Second. Question. the chromatic scale going up and uh, building tension, building inside us the feeling of inquietness of, uh, of uh, I would say, we, uh, if we are frightened, we, we are scared, we are afraid of something. So uh, almost panicked. And then at the end, it brings us to the big drama. The drama, which is the climax of the whole mazurka, when something really terrible happens here. I, uh, I want to use a kind of comparison, which maybe is a little brutal, maybe it's a little too brutal, I would say. Uh, but I think it opens our imagination. In this part, I want us to imagine the situation as if we are somewhere up in the mountains maybe or in some high buildings high building and we are watching a road and there is a road with a with a turn a big turn and we can see from up there that there are there is one car going from this side there is and there are two cars one is overpassing the other one and they are going from another side and this guy who is driving here he can't see that from just behind the corner there is a car which is going to hit him and they are going to crash so they don't see that but we can see and and we are up there very far and we cannot do anything about it and we are watching it until it happens and we are feeling more and more and more and more and more <sighs> afraid we are so just just listen to this moment again here it's like Chopin feeling that feeling of helplessness I would say and just doing this I don't agree with anything what's going on in my life I have enough of that I just it's it's really but I think it's also if you consider this mazurka as a ballad this is the drama which happens in the story 
there are many things we can think of and many things we can we can make happen we can uh, we can create in our imagination but i think it's very important this mazurka to do it to do it well and to express it while playing so that the audience can feel so then after the drama we have the melody four times the melody but we don't have the fugue anymore we have one the same voice only one voice left the rest is dead probably so and just playing without the pain So this is a difficult mazurka. So I hope now it's a little bit more clear. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play it through all, but while playing, I will just explain a little bit where we are, okay? So that you can follow um, the structure. We start from the fugue. Second voice, third voice, fourth, and then it should repeat the second time, but let me continue. Now we have the patriotic Mazur Polonaise. together and then we have the fugue again where from the bass magic part and 
now saying something. Breath again. So that's the masterpiece which I love and I would like you also to fall in love with. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you again in my next series. And those of you who doesn't know my previous 31 episodes, I uh, kindly invite you to watch them. There are videos about all mazurkas from Opus 6 until now. Thank you so much and bye.